Hello and welcome. This week, a update for Zemblink was released and I would like to share with you some of the changes. Okay, so the first change in this version of Zemblink is to movement type. The randomization process has been changed and should now be more randomized. Before, although I don't have an example, the character's head would uh, only work diagonally. It was basically a mathematical problem and that has now been resolved. So we should have better random movement. If I turn up the strength so we can see this. As you can see, the character now looks left, right, up, down. It will occasionally go diagonal, but hopefully a lot less. There we go. OK, and then depending on which emotion you choose, it will do something completely different. The next improvement is to uh, the head IK. So it's head and neck IK. So let's just set up our follow target. And we'll place this in front of the actor. Now watch. So we get smoother movement when I move around our actor for the metahuman to follow. And as you can see, it's into the character's neck to around, it starts to cut off around neck zero two, but it does go all the way down to spine five, but hopefully spine five won't move. The next huge change for this version is custom emotion maps. It replaces the existing uh, maps selection here. And we now have a data asset where you can change the values yourself without editing the C++. So if we just open up the default and we can expand for each emotion, there's 22 currently, we can expand and then we have blink interval, which is how often the blinks happen, blink duration, that's how long the blink lasts. Blink amplitude, that's how much the character will blink. Post blink delay, which is self explanatory. So after a blink, how long would the character wait before blinking again? Eye movement duration, this is how fast the eyes and in some instances head move. Eye movement range, that is the range. Uh, that the movement occurs. So lower values obviously will mean the eyes hardly move. And then head eye movement weight. Play around with these. Um, they're just here for convenience and consider them experimental for now. Let me show you that you can create your own custom map. Go to your content draw and let's just create a folder for this uh, tutorial. There we go. And we need to create a data asset so we can right click and search data asset. And on the miscellaneous, we can choose data asset. And then it's going to ask for a class. We search for Zemblink. And we get a Zemblink emotion data asset. So you select that. And it will create this. Let's call this test map one. OK. And then we can go back to the details panel and we can place our map here. Let's open the map up. And it's the same as the default, but let's create really fast movement. So for minimum blink interval, interval let's do 0.1. And we'll, for the max, 0.2. Blink duration, I think the same, 0.1, 0.2. Blink amplitude, I want maximum blinking all the time. So I'll set both of those to 1. Post blink delay, let's just set that to 0.1 as well. Eye movement duration, now this will be really fast, 0.2. And then for movement, we will do uh, 10 and 10 and maybe 10 again. Let's save. 
And now if I hit play, this is what we get. Let me just turn off facial emotion for a moment. There we go. Now, if we look carefully, the movement is much faster and the character is blinking a lot faster than before. What I suggest is that you play around with these maps for each emotion and see what results you can get. In future, I will be adding the ability to add new emotions in editor so you don't have to do that in C++. I've just stumbled across a few problems, so I haven't put it into this particular release. The next new feature is head movement inter interpolation and uh, speed. So if we, for example, set this to one, the head movement is really slow between movements. As you can see, it's very soft. Okay, and then if we were to set this to 50, the maximum, head movements will be sharp. Almost robotic look. I find the default of about six is fine. And there we go. Maybe we could do 10. Let's see how. 10 looks. There we go. OK. So that is head movement interpolation. Next is better integration with MetaHuman Animator. Here under head movement mode, you have transform track and control rig. Both enable the head control switch. And what this means is that we have head movement like so. I've put together this simple MetaHuman animator animation where I'm just moving my head around like so. Now before, Zemblink did not account for this, but I have now changed that. Let me show you this. So here is the resulting animation. And as you can see, it's just got various head movements. And if you type in the curve list, head control switch, as you can see it, well, maybe you can't see this on YouTube, but it is set to one. And that is because of MetaHuman Animator. So here is my sequence. And if we hit play. There is head movement. So <laughs> ignore the facial movement for now. That's nothing to do with Zemblin. That's just because I, I did the performance in low light. For this example, I currently have Zemblin set to use head movement turned off and head movement blend also set turned off set to zero. So what should happen is if I hit play, this is my MetaHuman animator animation where I'm moving my head. OK, so let's go back to the beginning and enable use head movement. So I want to do that and hit play again. As you can see, the MetaHuman animator animation is still there. But if we set this to one and hit play. Now around that region, look, there is no head movement. And what we can do is blend between the two. Let's see what results we get. So this is a blend of MetaHuman animator animation. And also Zemblink. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry about the facial uh, movement there. There we go. So let me turn down the facial animation. And there we go. So one is Zemblink, and it will just use Zemblink's movement. And then zero, it goes back to MetaHuman Animator animation from my iPhone. One. Not point five. What this means is, is that we let's just take this back to uh, MetaHuman Animator Blend. OK, so let's play that and oops, let's loop it. 
Okay. What we can do is go to Zemblink and set this to follow target. And Zemblink will constantly try and, and go back to the target. So let me set head movement blend to maybe favor the target. It's still trying to use the MetaHuman animator at, uh, animation, but it is trying to track the target at the same time. Obviously, again, if you want to track the full uh, the target in full, just switch head movement to uh, one. And then we can go. There we go. And it goes back. And so let's try one more blend between MetaHuman Animator and follow target. There we go. Let's favor the MetaHuman Animator animation. We're still getting the head movement from MetaHuman Animator, but it's looking at a target over to the character's right. The next update is eye tracking. I've done an update to the eye tracking system and hopefully it's improved now. The problem was is when I moved over to control rig with this rather than C++, the eyes didn't account for head rotation. So let's choose our camera and drag it into the scene. Sorry, into sequencer. And this is what we have. So now if I move the camera, the character will hopefully depending on your lens settings, look directly into the camera. Or as close as it can get to understanding where the center of the camera is. The controls still exist in Zemblink to adjust this. I aim adjust where you can move the eyes left and right up and down and why should you need it so maybe there we go slightly down and so when i move the camera he's now looking directly into the camera and it is accounting for the lens That's it for the eyes. Hopefully um, that makes things or improves things for the people who were troubled by that. The next update is to face animation blend. Um, what I've done here is if we take, uh, for example, this annoyed expression and we have lip sync animation coming from this animation here, when you just face animation blend now, it will blend between Zemblink's facial animation, but lip sync should not change. I've essentially adapted the weighting. So if we have a look, this is without Zemblink. And with Zemblink turned up to full. As you can see, there's no difference really in the lip sync. Uh, let's try angry. There we go. So angry on full. Let's tone that down a little. And so if we adjust face animation blend again, there should be very little difference in the mouth movement. This required adding another control rig to Zemblink to control the facial curves around the mouth. But hopefully that has solved another problem. Uh, that has been occurring for some people. If you're interested in purchasing the Zemblink plugin, it is currently included in Fab's February sale, so go there now to get a discount of 30%. Thanks for watching. More content is on the way.